How's it going everyone? My name is Noctulius Isaac and today I'd like to talk to you about Samael, the Reaper and the Venom of God. In this video, we'll delve into some of the history behind how Samael became the Angel of Death, but more importantly we'll discuss the gnosis and powers which can be absorbed through the work with this draconian deity. Classical necromancers perhaps know this dark angel by the name of Azrael. He is the angel standing over Jerusalem with the sword, preparing to deliver God's judgment. And in fact, he's the only angel ruthless enough to carry out any of God's orders, no matter how errant and destructive they will turn out in the end. At least, this is the Jewish lore and mythology behind the entity. Which is important. However, he is not viewed as an agent of any god in the draconian tradition. And actually, it's questionable whether or not he still serves God even in the Jewish lore. See, Samael is thought to be so hardcore that he is actually the one being referred to in the Old Testament as Ha-Satan, the adversarial one, standing amongst the jury of angels and accusing God's followers. And so the name Samael, Venom of God, is rather suitable for this angel, as there is a naturally antisocial edge to his personality and everything that he does. See, according to the mythology, in the beginning the earth knew what would happen if God took a handful of dirt and breathe life into it to create the first man. And so, Gabriel was sent. Israfil was sent. Each angel sent in succession heard the cry of the earth, and returned to God empty-handed. Out of the mercy and compassion within their hearts, the desire to preserve divine order even against the errant decisions of the divine himself. But Azrael didn't really care. And so when he was sent, he carried out the task to completion. And so he was rewarded by God with the power over life and death itself. In the classic story of the plagues of Egypt, the angel of death is sent to kill the firstborn sons of the Egyptians. The only thing that would sate the wrath of this angel for any one particular family was to smear blood upon the door of their house, the blood of a lamb. And while contemporary Christianity views this as a type and shadow of the Christ and his shed blood for the sins of humanity, it's rather interesting to look at the underlying theme of both scenarios. That when faced with the wrath and destruction of either the angel of death or the father of sin himself, human beings had to offer the blood of some innocent soul to the reaper in question. And so even within the Judeo-Christian paradigm, death is a necessary part of life which cannot be avoided. And when he comes to collect, he cannot be refused. And this is actually how it is viewed from the draconian perspective as well. Anything of the clefathic, dark, negative, cruel, or ugly side of life which we do not want to deal with, once brought forth into your consciousness and into your life, cannot, in the words of E.A. Coetting, be sent away like a paid prostitute. You must face it and be destroyed, or face it and come through on the other side, empowered by the experience. Now, in our work there have been many visions of the Angel of Death, but they generally tend to share some of the same characteristics. There is a skeletal being shrouded in a black robe of shadow, wielding a sword in one hand and a chalice brimming with poison in the other. Many times he is also seen with twelve blackened wings, six on one side and six on the other. Corresponding to the zodiac and the overall concept of change, which is the only constant when working with the Draconian Path. Actually, we can take a further look into the powers which can be absorbed by working with the consciousness of the Reaper. Samael's sword severs the ties which bind us to our physical bodies. This is the art and skill of soul flight, otherwise known as astral projection, soul travel, or even wake-induced lucid dreaming. His venom is the poison that initiates transformation, representative of the ability to dissolve appearances, see through illusions, and perceive reality as it actually is. The skeleton under the hooded robe has a twofold meaning. The skeleton is the shadow, the bare bones of our personal universe. It's the subconscious mind, all of the skeletons in your closet. The robe, on the other hand, represents the fact that the skeleton is not usually seen. The many roles we play, the different forms of consciousness we assume, and even the blackness of sleep itself, all of these things conceal who we really are, even from ourselves. As mentioned earlier, the wings of Samael represent the essence of change itself. However, they also stand for freedom, inspiration, and ambition. 
They are transcendence, the will to soar beyond your boundaries and embrace the sky as the limit. In rites of death and soul flight, they represent the soul's ability to leave the body behind and fly freely through the night. By assuming the consciousness of the Reaper and rites of invocation, we can develop these same qualities within ourselves. It then becomes easier to develop skills like astral projection, trance, clairvoyance, shamanic tripping, and so on. The Mask of the Angel of Death opens us to the awareness that life and death are inseparable. And through this awareness, you will discover freedom and power that can only come through the force of change itself.